All right, hi everyone. Uh, got another video today. Um, another book review. So I've been on kind of a naval kick, I guess. Uh, I read this one, uh, Empire and Holy War in the Mediterranean, uh, by Philip Williams, published in 2014. So uh, almost 10 years ago now. Um, and really, I enjoyed it. I uh, wanted to do a review, um, but before I continue, uh, the other channel, The Joy of Wargaming, was nice enough to uh, recommend me on his uh, recent video. So I uh, just want to say thank you. Uh, I appreciate that, and uh, I hope uh, if you're a new subscriber, you uh, enjoy the channel. Um, I uh, haven't been putting out much like actual gaming and, and hobby videos because um, I actually am living in Turkey uh, right now so I don't have um, uh, I don't really have the money or the space right now to uh, do hobby stuff so that's why uh, you know if you look at my channel there's no more gaming and hobby videos that's why uh, anyway so with that uh, out of the way uh, this is a really great book. Um, I really enjoyed it. A uh, good overview of the Ottoman, uh, more so the uh, the Habsburg Navy and the Spanish in particular. Um, so it does touch on the Ottomans, uh, but the author's focus is more on the Habsburgs. Um, that's understandable. The sources for the Habsburgs are just more accessible generally uh, and focuses a lot on letters and that sort of thing. Uh, and he really hones in on um, basically the period after, uh, during the, the, the Cyprus War, which most people know it's the Battle of Lepanto, basically, in most people's minds. It's just that battle, uh, and that's it. But there's a bigger war going on context. Um, and um, so he starts there, and then he challenges kind of an existing narrative that's even discussed by a lot of um, academic historians is that after 1580, basically, um, the Eastern Mediterranean or the Mediterranean general uh, wasn't really contested by either power uh, and the Spanish and, and sort of the Ottomans to an extent kind of gave up on the Mediterranean. They just focused their efforts on the Atlantic uh, and, you know, and then that was it. You know, the Mediterranean didn't really matter anymore, uh, essentially. Uh, in, a, in a geopolitical context, but what Williams does here, uh, really good, in a really good way, is say, you know, hang on a second, that's not really correct, and here's the evidence that we have to back it up. Um, and another thing I like about this, and and which you know, some people that may want just more technical uh, military history stuff, he gets into sort of the mentality behind um, the Habsburgs, especially. Uh, King Philip II, or Emperor, um, yeah, King Philip II of Spain, um, you know, probably one of the best, I think probably one of the best Spanish monarchs uh, in their history, um, and, you know, the, kind of their approach to waging war against the Ottomans, um, which he says was kind of motivated by prudence, so they wanted to fight more defensively, uh, they didn't really want to do huge uh, wars of conquest um, and drive, uh, you know, basically fight wars of aggression. They tried to avoid that during the reign of Philip II, that is. Um, and that was kind of the, the guiding Habsburg principle uh, in the second half of the 16th century. Um, but he also does, um, if I could back up for a second, he does a good job. He lays out the 16th century history, military history, in a really succinct way in the first chapter or so. Um, so he talks about how you have three three phases, more or less, to um, the conflict in the Mediterranean. And I think this is a good way of dividing it. Um, so he says, you know, you have your, your initial phase, 1494 to 1530. So this is when the Ottomans um, are kind of doing doing their own thing, sort of, um, they start to expand into, um, into, uh, uh, the Mamluk Sultanate, which I talked about in an earlier, uh, my video on the Ottoman Navy. Uh, so that was a big conquest for them, gives them more legitimacy in the Islamic world. Uh, and then, and then he puts it at 1530. And so that's when 
few four years after the Battle of Mohach in Hungary, they've um, the Ottomans are really now embedded in the European uh, great power struggle more than even more so than they were beforehand. Um, and then after he says 1530, 1560, that's when the Ottomans are working with the French uh, in tandem, sort of to um, uh, basically to, to fight the Habsburgs because while this, all this is going on, uh, you have the Italian Wars in Italy. So the the Valois, that's the dynasty in France, and the Habsburgs are fighting over uh, first it's Naples, uh, and then in the second phase that that uh, that Williams outlines, it's over uh, Milan in northern Italy, uh, and then 1560 to 1620 uh, is the final phase, um, and that's when it's no longer really so much about you know this this like tripartite you know kind of conflict. It's um, mostly going to be the Habsburgs and the Ottomans fighting it out, um, and because by that point, by about mid mid century, that's when the wars of religion start in France. So you get uh, they're kind of out of out of the game, so to speak. Um, one thing he points out with the he gets into describing the fleets, and he does. I think he more satisfactorily covers the Habsburgs. Um, you know, I don't want to I don't want to criticize books like this too harshly for not getting into the Ottomans because. The sources are really hard to deal with. It's it's just you know so it's not really fair to say well you didn't do all this extra work, um, you know he does a good job outlining, uh, giving I think making a good case for it too. He says the Habsburgs so they had fleets that were rowed by paid oarsmen uh, and they really wanted um, basically uh, experienced men to row the the galleys and. This was really critical when they had to uh, fight and survive, basically. Uh, so, you know, the, this was a crucial aspect of having paid oarsmen that kind of had pride. Um, they were recruited regionally, so that was another thing that kind of kept the men together. Um, and this was kind of hard in the 16th century. You wanted to find experienced men, and you know you have to think about you know kind of the high mortality rate they probably dealt with. Um, and uh, for example, you know they say the problem with the Venetian fleet that he discusses that the Spanish remarked on in 1573. Uh, so this is during the uh, this is after Lepanto, so during the Cyprus War when the Ottomans are, are winning the war basically. Uh, you know, the Spanish say, you know, the, the, the Venetian fleet is just a mess. You know, it's not really, the ships are in poor repair and they have bad, bad rowers, basically. Uh, and the Ottomans, of course, I think probably maybe, um, you know, not so much anymore in media, but, you know, the, the cliche of the, you know, the galley, the Turkish galleys, you know, that's where this comes from. And, and it's true. I mean, the galleys and the Ottoman fleet was rowed by either their own peasant kind of levies or slaves, um, And um, he discusses a lot of numbers, basically saying that after Lepanto, this idea that the fleets were smaller or not relevant, that's not really the case. Um, and there's no, he says there's really, in the main th kind of contribution of the book, it comes in at the end, but he says, there's no drawdown on the Mediterranean. This idea that the Spanish just shifted to the Atlantic is kind of, is, is mistaken because he says you need both. They needed both because the galleys protect the uh, Mediterranean, which supply all the fortresses, all the garrisons along the coast, the Mediterranean coast, and that goes for both both sides. Um, and he says the reason why there's really no major sea battles from 1580 to 1620 is because there's no drawdown in the Mediterranean. They keep building, maintaining fleets. There's there's regular patrols, um, so that kind of keeps things uh, at an equilibrium in the Mediterranean. Um, and he says, you know, it was a symbiotic relationship. The Spanish needed the Mediterranean to pursue an Atlantic strategy, and they needed the Atlantic strategy to help uh, ensure their their continuing their dominance in the, in the Mediterranean, basically. Um, and uh, I think, uh, you know, overall, I think it's a good book. Uh, like I said, gets in the mentality. Sometimes I think the um, the organization might not be 
the best suited to someone if you're reading the book expecting like a clear story. You know, that's not really how he writes. It's more focused on themes. So he kind of jumps around a little bit. Um, I found that kind of confusing sometimes, but you know, I, I'm used to reading books like this. So, if, but if you're more used to narratively written stuff, this, you know, you might have to get used to that, but just different styles. Um, but anyway, um, I encourage you, uh, check it out if you want to find it online or something. And, um, plenty of, uh, ideas for war games or, you know, just general history interests. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this and, uh, talk to you all in the next video.